Hello, it's Mandy and welcome back to my channel. This week for dinner, we are making delicious, easy, and affordable meals for my family. So stick around and let's get cooking. All right, so we're gonna do spaghetti tonight. So I've got my spaghetti sauce, got my egg noodles, cause you know, Walmart didn't have any spaghetti. And I've got that pound of ground turkey. I do, I'm gonna use this small onion I have left. I think I'm gonna stick my mushrooms in just to use those up so we don't waste those. So I'm gonna get my pasta water going. I'm gonna start browning up my meat. So I coarsely chopped those mushrooms that I had left. So I'm so excited not to waste those. And I've got that small onion. I'm gonna add the small onion to my pound of ground turkey that I have browning on the stove. So that can be working. And then I'll add my mushrooms once the meat is browned. So I'm gonna take my food mover. And I'm gonna take my onions to the stove. So my turkey and onion mixture is looking good. Take some minced garlic, add that in there, give it a stir. And now I'm gonna add in those mushrooms. So I've let that hang out for a couple minutes. Mushrooms are looking good. I'm gonna pour in my spaghetti sauce. This is tomato, basil, and garlic. I'm gonna pour that in. And here is that completed sauce. I just turned it down to simmer, put a lid on it, let that hang out, and this turned out delicious. Once I plated it up, I tore some of those basil leaves that I had left over and put that on top. It made this so tasty. With all that snow, it's time to make some chili. So I'm going to brown up this ground turkey. I'm gonna chop this small onion. I'm gonna add the onion to my turkey meat and get that browning on the stove. And then I'm gonna get my crock pot ready with the rest of the ingredients. So here in my crock pot, I have rinsed and drained the one can of pinto beans. So I added that in. I then added the two cans of the mixed chili beans. I left the sauce on this add flavor to my chili so I just added those into my crock pot and then once I had all my beans in my crock pot I added this can of crushed tomatoes once I gave that a stir and had all those combined I added in my ground turkey and onion mixture and stirred that in as well Next, I added in two cans of water and stirred that in as well. I just put a lid on my crock pot, set it to high for four hours. And this is the completed chili. It was so warm, so hearty, and so good on such a snowy day. I did make cornbread according to the Jiffy Box package. Instructions like I always do, but as you can see, it did not come out good. Um, I don't know if it was the humidity from the snow, but it's all good because I just crumbled my cornbread up in my chili anyways. So this is the completed chili and it was delicious and it made a ton of food. Tonight, we are making the broccoli and cheddar soup. So I'm gonna shred up two carrots. I'm gonna chop this half of an onion that I have left. And I have laid out these two bags of broccoli cuts so that I can defrost them a little bit and then chop those. I am gonna take this shredded carrot and the chopped half of an onion. I'm gonna add that to my Dutch oven that I have some butter in as well. So I'm gonna use this to like soften up these veggies and then we will be adding in our broccoli and our other ingredients. Now that my veggies have softened, I'm gonna add some seasoning. I'm gonna add some kosher salt, some black pepper, and then I'm going to be adding in some ground cayenne pepper. Um, just a couple dashes, you can do this to taste. 
Now I'm adding in some bouillon cubes. I have added two, here's the third one, and I'm gonna add a couple cups of water. And now it's time to work on my broccoli cuts. So I'm gonna take these broccoli cuts, I open the first bag, and I'm just going to kind of rough chop, get these into smaller bites for the soup. And so it's still frozen some, but it is loose enough that I believe I can cut through it. So I'm just gonna chop through this broccoli and make it into smaller pieces. So here is some of that chopped broccoli, but then I was gonna open the next bag and chop it as well. And I remembered I had a little bit of fresh broccoli in the fridge. My daughter had come home with a couple of fresh broccoli spears that she had from a lunch event that she had at work that was left over. So this was some fresh broccoli and I thought that I would keep the one in the freezer that was frozen and I would just chop up this fresh that I had in the fridge so that it did not go to waste. So now I'm just going to take this broccoli and I'm going to go put it into my Dutch oven with all the other goodies. And here is what my soup looks like at this point with just the chicken broth and the carrots, the broccoli, and the onions and the seasonings. Now that that soup has come up to a rapid boil, I'm gonna add in this can of cheddar cheese soup. Now this is a shortcut, just to get a little bit of creamy consistency. You could also do this with adding in some um, heavy whipping cream or half and half or even milk. But remember, I'm trying to do this on a tight budget. So I added in this can of cheddar cheese soup and I got that incorporated and stirred it well to combine. Next, I am shredding up that eight ounce block of cheddar cheese that I had bought. Um, any of the tools that you're seeing me use in my videos, the food mover, the little slotted spoon that sits on the side of your pan, this cheese shredder, all of these things I have linked in the description box below if you would like to take a look at those for yourself. But this thing here shreds cheese up so easily. And so I shredded up that whole block of cheese and then I'm just gonna add that to my soup mixture. One thing that I will say when you add your cheese to your soup, go ahead and turn the temperature off because you do not want that cheese to separate. And so you turn it off. There's a lot of heat. I mean, obviously the soup was boiling. So there's still a lot of residual cooking heat in this soup. Just turn your burner off. Stir this in really well until that cheese melts and this soup is ready to serve. I did make some three ingredient bread that we use to dunk in our soup, and I will link that video below. Here is our finished broccoli and cheddar soup. It was so delicious. I will definitely say this was the favorite meal of the week. So today we are gonna start that chicken casserole. I'm so excited because this is my mom's recipe. It's one of my favorite meals she makes. So in here I have the three chicken thighs from that big family pack that I had put in the freezer that I didn't use. Put that in my stock pot. And anybody who's watched anything on my channel knows that um, when I make anything with vegetables, I put all the scraps in pieces, all of that into a little freezer bag. And then I pop it in my freezer for moments like this when I'm gonna cook something and need some stock. So I'm gonna add this to this. I'm gonna add some water, bring this to a boil, and then drop it back to simmer and let this cook for a couple hours. Then I'll be able to take the chicken out and shred that for my chicken casserole. And then I can strain the liquid and I have homemade chicken stock, delicious. So let me add in my veggies, get some water on, we'll put this on. So the here, as you can see, that pretty much filled my pot. This is just a great way to not waste veggies. You can see that some of these are not the ends, like this is a, um, a piece of celery. This is like a whole carrot. These were things that were gonna go bad in my fridge and I just decided I wasn't gonna waste it. So I threw it in my stock bag. I have like the ends here of an onion. Of course, I'm gonna strain all this out, even if there's like a little bit of skin there. Once the chicken's cooked, I'm gonna remove the chicken and then I will strain the stock. So I'm gonna get water on this, get this to a boil on my stove. Now I have this water in my pot. I've turned this on high. I'm going to very liberally add some kosher salt. I'm gonna do three big pinches because I want this to have tons of flavor. 
And then I'm gonna add two pinches of pepper. And then I'm just gonna put a lid on it. Now, if you had a stockpile or, you know, a, a, a seasoning cabinet built up, add thyme, rosemary, bay leaf, all of the good things. But since we're keeping this an extreme budget, I'm just doing salt and pepper. Gonna put a lid on this and then we're gonna let it come to a boil. So here is that finished pot. I removed the chicken after about 30 minutes and I've just had it kind of sitting here hanging out, cooling so I can deal with that. And I let this go another 30 minutes. And now I'm going to strain the liquid so that I can get this yummy broth. Once I drained that stock, I got three containers here of stock off of that. Now, I'm not sure the size of these containers. I'm just trying to kind of show you. But I got three whole containers of that delicious stock. I'm going to pop a lid on these and I'm going to put these in my freezer. This was a great way, a no spend way to use up a lot of things in my freezer, fridge, and pantry. So here I'm getting my casserole dish ready for the chicken casserole and those that watched me over the Christmas holidays know how special this casserole dish is. So I just shredded up those chicken thighs that I cooked and I ended up adding in that can of chicken breast that I had bought and shown in my grocery haul. I just felt like I needed it. I then added in the cream of chicken and the cream of mushroom soup. I did not add any more seasonings because the chicken was so flavorful from the way that I cooked it in the that broth and that stock. So once I got those cream of soups in, I just gave this a quick stir to combine and got that into an even layer here in my casserole dish. Now for the topping, I am going to take a stick of butter and melt that down in the microwave. Now you don't have to use a whole stick of butter. You could choose to use half if you wanted to, but I really like butter. And so we're going to melt this down in the microwave. And then I'm going to be taking this chicken stuffing mix and I'm going to be spreading that all over the top in an even layer. And then once my butter is finished, I am going to be pouring that down over the top as well. That's just going to help get that brown, crispy crust going. And remember, this stuffing mix has a lot of flavor in it as well. So that's another reason that I'm not adding extra seasonings. So after I get the butter spread, as evenly as I can, I am going to put this in a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes to heat that soup through and to get that topping nice and crisp. Now, something went on with my camera in this next shot. This is the completed casserole out of the oven after 20 minutes at 400 degrees. But for some reason, my camera went wonky here on me. So anyway, that's what the plate looked like once we were finished. And it was so delicious. I knew it was going to be delicious. I've grown up eating this and it was definitely a win. So that's going to do it for our video this week. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time. Bye.